probably is one of the stronger bundles that we've seen lately. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. That's right, we got another humble bundle coming up. This is the Bandai Namco 4 bundle, and it's been quite a minute since I made a video. I was just not really feeling in the mood, and then I was feeling quite jolly because my Switch came, but I only wanted to play the Switch, so <laughs> we're going to go ahead, try and get back into the swing of things. I'm pretty excited for the Bandai Namco bundle, honestly, because they've got a ton of great franchises under their belt. They've got the Dragon Ball series, which I always love, Soul Calibur, Tekken, Gundam, and they also worked on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is what has been pulling me away, so <laughs> it's kind of ironic. Avoiding looking at the Bandai Namco bundle because I'm playing a Bandai Namco game. <laughs> but anyways, we'll jump into it. We'll take a look at these tiers and see how it goes. VPN powers activate. Haha, <laughs> gotcha, bitch. In the $1 tier, we've got Pac-Man 256, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, and Get Even. In the Beat the Average tier, boy, that average is creeping up quick. <laughs> oh, it was under $10 when I looked at it last night, but wow. But if you beat that average, no matter what it is at the time that you buy it, you can get the Dot .hack GU Last Recode, Katamari Damacy Reroll, ooh, that makes my mouth water, and Rad. In the $15 or more tier, we've got Tekken 7, Tales of Berseria, and in the $25 tier, we've got The Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan. Medan? Whatever, I ain't gonna buy it anyways for $25. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at these games individually and see how they stack up. Pac-Man 256. Procedurally generated endless game of Pac-Man with power-ups that make power pellets look like child's play? It sounds like a win, but... When you consider the fact that the game is free to play on mobile, it suddenly loses some appeal. It's not a bad game by any means, but I question why one would pay to play a game that's free on mobile. Does PC provide an infinitely better gaming experience? Absolutely. But does that warrant paying money for a Pac-Man game? Uh, not particularly. I won't do too much complaining about it though, since it is in the lowest bundle tier. 33 cents? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. And if you're wondering why they call it Pac-Man 256, it is because when you get 256 pellets, you get like a big explodey power, which I guess is a good enough reason as any. Enslaved Odyssey to the West is a beat-em-up with nice visuals, but not much else to write home about. The game attempts to prop itself up with the story, but the tone is all over the place, and it really doesn't hit home for me. That will become sort of a theme in this bundle. You do get to see a post-apocalyptic New York City that's being retaken by the jungle, but that's really the only wow that I got out of this game. If you put in 10 hours, you'll have completed it, and there's practically no reason to replay it. Mediocre is the best way to describe this game. The first tier is a good place for it. I would highly recommend that you play this game with a controller if you're going to play it at all, because the keyboard controls are just borked. <laughs> get even. Why is it that when people want to cobble together a meaningless story, they just call it a psychological horror game and seem to get a pass? Maybe we're getting off on the wrong foot. Get Even is a decent title, even though it isn't in my wheelhouse. It's all about investigating and stealthing and piecing together evidence. The story's pretty solid and the audio does create just the right atmosphere. I could totally see myself enjoying this game in another life. But in this life, I like my games loud and dumb. In my opinion, this game is definitely the best one in the first tier. Dot Hack GU Recode. This is actually a compilation of three OG Dot Hack GU titles: Rebirth, Reminiscence, and Redemption. To sweeten the deal, there is also a fourth volume included, Reconnection. But in my opinion, that's the weakest of the four. I do remember playing Dot Hack on the PS2 way back when I was a young lad, and it might actually be one of the reasons that I enjoy the JRPG grind as much as I do today. If you missed these games when they first came out, this is kind of a quick and easy way to catch up. And I do mean quick. The grind was shorn down to a fraction of what it used to be. But I guess that's because the gaming scene is pretty different these days. People want their gratification quick, fast, in a hurry. 
but if you love the grind as much as I do, then I'd suggest hunting down the old titles and an old PS2. They can't be that much nowadays, can they? I mean, probably they are, because collectors are driving up the price, but whatever. <laughs> Dot Hack is still worth experiencing, although I might be slightly biased on that. Katamari Damacy Reroll. Oh, man. This one actually is on my wish list. This and Tekken 7 are the games luring me to buy this bundle. Too bad my Switch has been running me dry lately. Again, I experienced this one on PS2, and it was glorious! The two words that probably best describe this game, casual genius. The keyboard wasn't really cut out for Katamari, but if you have a controller, oof, get ready for a blast from the past as you roll up all the things and bob your head along to one of the catchiest soundtracks ever created. We all need more Katamari in our lives. I would really like to get my hands on this sooner rather than later, but wait I must. Ah, rad. Post-apocalyptic roguelike with a vaporwave vibe. Yeah, this game totally has my number. It's not the hardest roguelike that you'll ever experience, but enemy variety and abilities are varied enough that you'll probably want to take it for another spin or two. Some abilities are massively overpowered, but if you feel like spicing up the gameplay, why not purposely pick one of the weaker abilities? As with most games in this genre, you'll start out getting pummeled left and right, but once you get your act together, get things figured out and start progressing, that is a fantastic feeling, and the main reason that I play roguelikes. And this game manages to provide that satisfaction on a much shorter time scale than something like Nuclear Throne. Tekken 7! I'll be the first to admit that Tekken isn't my favorite fighting game, but Tekken 7 does look damn tempting. The one sticking point for me is the shitload of DLC characters. It seems to be the way things are shifting, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it. Street Fighter's good fun, but I don't want to pony up for fighters that have been around since the beginning. Same with Smash Brothers. same story with Tekken. I also question the decision to include Negan as a DLC fighter. His limbs are super stiff, so he's awkward to play as. I love the hell out of Negan as a character, but I don't think that this game does him justice. Overall, a tempting game, but it asks for far more investment than I'm willing to give currently. Tales of Berseria. We got another JRPG here. And honestly, even accounting for the nostalgia goggles, I like this one way more than Dot .hack. When the game came to a close, it was almost depressing. After a grand adventure, it's always hard to say goodbye, even if the characters you're so invested in are just a series of zeros and ones. Tales of Berseria is a fantastic story that will keep you occupied for quite a good long time. I love the writing, I love the story, and this is a great game that any JRPG fan should experience. And for $25, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan. Medan. Still don't know how to say it. <laughs> I really do hate to crap on a game in the top tier, but crap I must. Man of Medan is another game that attempts to skate by on its story. The problem with that is that the story is such a mixed bag that I'm not sure whoever wrote it has any concept of theming or tone. The voice acting is done well enough, but it feels like there was some sort of disconnect between the actors and the game designers. For horror fans, this game might serve just fine, but the story was so broken and the action was so slow that I really couldn't stomach that much of it. Probably one of the worst Bandai Namco games they could have stuck in the top tier, but whatever. Alright, so what of it, Dane? What of it? What do you think of the bundle? Well, the $1 tier is not really even that tempting to me. I mean, you are getting the games for 33 cents, but even then, I'm just not that interested in any of them. If I did go for something, it would be the Beat the Average tier to relive Dot Hack and Katamari Damacy, particularly Katamari Damacy. If the Beat the Average was still in like the $5, $6 range, then I would have jumped on it immediately. But. Now that it's creeping up to $11, mm, I'm not as tempted. At that point, you might as well just throw a couple more bucks in and get Tekken and Tails of Berseria. I already have Tails, but Tekken does look super delicious, and the online community is pretty active. Although the truth is that I don't play fighting games that much these days. Although that is slowly changing as I find myself playing more and more of Super Smash Bros. each day. Uh, and then the top tier, $25, is you're just throwing away 10 bucks at that point. I don't know why anyone would want Man of Midden. The visuals look nice, there aren't any technical bugs in it, but, ah, that story is just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Especially as a writer myself, it's like, 
I can't, I can't. I just can't, you guys. But then again, some people do seem to enjoy it. Probably people with a, a less critical eye for writing, so... What do I know? Maybe I'm just jaded. Overall, this game doesn't really have enough to lure me in, honestly. I've experienced Dot Hack. Rad looks kind of cool. Katamari Damacy, I'd sell my left nut. <laughs> but, uh, if I bought the Beat the Average tier, I'd only be buying it for three games out of the six. It's just, it just doesn't make financial sense at the moment. This week I bought a Pro Controller, Animal Crossing, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, like, uh, <laughs> the bank account is mad at me right now. And while I could come up with whatever, $10, $15 to get the bundle, eh, it's really not worth running myself dry over it, honestly. But overall, I think it probably is one of the stronger bundles that we've seen lately. I do feel like Bandai Namco's holding out just a little bit, because there is so much great stuff that they have. There's no Dragon Ball Z in here, can you believe that? Ugh, why would they do this? <laughs> How could you do this to me? Uh, so yeah, it's a hard sell for me. I'll probably give it the old skipperoo. But I'd like to know what you guys think, what you guys did with it. If you do decide to buy it, please use my link in the description or in the pinned comment. It's definitely appreciated. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons as well. We've got Nico the Legend, Damon Darkstar, and Radimus Cisco. You boys, definitely my heroes. Definitely give me some motivation to keep doing what I'm doing and not let the channel drop. To everybody else, I appreciate you as well. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe on the video if you did enjoy. Check out that Discord. We got some giveaways going on. You can alert me the new bundles, <laughs> which is really helpful since I don't have a ton of time to scour the internet these days. And of course, we got the, the link to Twitter if you want to, you know, get to know me a little better and probably end up hating me. Be like, wow, this guy's an asshole. <laughs> You're right. I'm surprised the, the videos that I make didn't clue you into that. <laughs> but anyways, I hope to see you over there. Catch up with me. I'll see you in the next Bundle Banter. Probably Bundle Banter. I also need to get back to uploading Pokemon Team Rocket Edition, but... Uh, it's just so difficult. It's just so difficult. There's too much good stuff to play, and I know I will die having not even played a fraction of it. So I'm off to go have an existential crisis. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. This has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. And until then, bye bye